Screenwriters' Treatment and Compensation in UK The topic for this session is mainly focused on how screenwriters are compensated both financially and in the sense of creative credit. The audio recordings in this session is given willingly by Mr. Robin Mahaji, an esteemed screenplay writer. A screenplay contributes at least half of any film's creative value. Without a script, a film project would not even have a place to begin. Imagine a finished film as a live human body. The director gives the person his or her soul, the acting gives the person his or her appearance, the post his or her garnish, but it is the screenplay that gives the person his or her bone structure. Without the script, said person would just drop into a heap of bloody mess. Screenwriters spend hours in, on perfecting the works they've created, doing most of the work before even getting paid, burning even more energy changing the script again and again to fit the producers, the directors, and even the actors' needs. Professional filmmakers have seen its truth since the early ages of film history. Finishing a script is a job that deserves honor, remuneration, and it requires a tremendous amount of faith to achieve. I've been lucky to have one. I, I think um, not everybody who, who starts out or wants to have a career path in, in screenwriting survives very long. Um, so so to, be, to, to be still active at this point is good. As this quote from Raymond Chandler in 1945 indicates, the value of a script in film is of utmost importance, but it is often wrongly seen as not a part of the filming practice. For the basic art of motion picture is the screenplay. It is fundamental. Without it, there is nothing. Everything derives from the screenplay, and most of that which derives is an applied skill which, however adept, is artistically not in the same class with the creation of a screenplay. But in Hollywood, the screenplay in written by a salaried writer under the supervision of a producer, that is to say, by an employee, without the power or decision over the use of his own craft, without ownership of it, and almost without honor of it. I've written for TV where I've not met the cast. So you, you operate as a writer in one bubble and they will operate in another bubble. I don't think that's a very good way of going around it because the problem with that very uh, uneven creative process is that it's not communicative. As a result, Screenwriters don't even get the compensation and reputation that they deserve. As Doria Alvarez states, using a vivid example from a successful screenwriter from UK, Writers grow accustomed to have their work mutilated beyond recognition by a production line of writers. William Nicholson recalls the hour after returning to Britain from the prize-giving ceremony, he heard the film critic Jonathan Ross declare on the BBC that The Pianist, which was a wonderful movie, had won two major Oscars, Best Actor and Best Director. There was no mention of the Best Adapted Screenplay. The screenplay writer in this case had been completely left out of the picture and was given no credit at all. It's noticeable that directors in movies tend to want to screen credit. Mm -hmm. So um, I do wonder, and I've heard stories where really you, you think the director is, is messing with the script just in order to be acknowledged as part of the script writing process. Right. And, and I think many directors like, they, they want to emulate the auteur, the concept of the auteur. And, and actually, I'm, this is anecdotal. I've had, Good, I've had good and bad experiences, but I hear other people's experiences too. And directors can be very jealous of the idea that there is a scriptwriter. The scriptwriter is almost resented as having meddled with the, uh, the glory that would otherwise go to them.
to the director. And I've known instances of directors behaving abominably towards the scriptwriter. And then scriptwriters then not working with the director anymore. Of course, the director's got nothing to work with. They have no. They, they try. They've tried themselves, but uh, without the, without the writer, unless they're an author, uh, without the writer, they they are unable to function. Right. So I've, I've exper- I have experienced this with di- with directors who resent the fact that there is a writer mm-hmm. and, and attempt to as much as possible obliterate the writer from all screenings or credits. Or I've known writers who have only known that they've won an award or their their film has won an award because somebody's told them the next day um, a friend has said, "Oh, and by the way, did you do you know your film was up for this award last night?" And what? And they, and they said, I, "I had no idea." So you, you even get situations where writers are not invited to the party. Right. I think if you look at some right, there's some directors. Let's say Ken Loach, for example. Mm-hmm. Always the writer's credit is separate. Um, I think Nick Rogue. I think are the same. I mean, you, you look at those and You know, for example, you know with Ken Loach that he had a lot to do with the script because he's a director. Of course he works with the yeah. script, he develops it, you know, he works with the writer. He, he rewrites stuff on set, mm-hmm. but he always acknowledges that the writer of the script was yeah. Laverty. And I've seen so many um, joint credits now where it's written, you know, it's directed by blo- Fred Bloggs, screenplay by Fred Bloggs and Joe Watson. Yeah, it's that feel that makes me feel better. So many joint credits and you... You think, well, I, the writer visualizes some of the direction. Does that mean they get a director's credit? I think it's a, a little silly. So far as amoral or illegal um, destruction of the writer's credit goes, it's rare because a good contract has got to protect. It, 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 it would only happen if the contract has been poorly drafted. According to Richard Lee's article from The Guardian, the report finds average earning of British authors are just £12,500, with legal protection among the worst in Europe. This figure is just 55% of average earnings in the UK, coming in below the minimum wage for a full-time job at £18,000 and well below the Joseph Roundtree Foundation's minimum income standard of £17,100. And this is just the earnings of professional writers. Imagine how abysmal the number would look if freelance writers were added to the equation. According to these numbers, writers are better off making a living working at a cafe or a fast food restaurant. In fact, this is true for a lot of cases. Most writers are forced to work multiple jobs just to support their life and career. When other people are sitting around the table being paid and the writer isn't, I think that's terrible. And in fact, it, I think as writers we have a duty to not accept that. The risk a writer faces is also great. Screenwriters undoubtedly are active economic partners of producing and planning, but they do not seem to receive much professional recognition for this vital role. Moreover, their earnings often fail to reflect the amount of work produced and do not reward adequately the at risk taken, including the possibility that production could stop after the screenplay is written, in which case the writer have done all of the work for nothing. In the sense of IP rights and earnings, there are factual documents showing how screenwriters are to be compensated. The script itself is always considered an original creation to which IP rights are attached. The original copyright owner will endeavor to reserve certain rights, such as publication rights, stage right, radio rights, rights to character, should he or she wish to write a sequel, detailed rights purchase agreement help avoid unforeseen legal problems further down the road. As a general rule of thumb, Screenplays account for 1% to 2% of a film's budget. However, arguably, screenwriters are entitled to ask up to 5% in fees paid to them for rights to the material. 
However, producers and film companies find all kinds of ways to rid the writers of their rights to material and salary. There is bullying in the industry, we know that. It's not enough to hire a screenwriter. They need to occupy their minds, they need to control them and own them in a way. And I've experienced that. I think all my friends have experienced that in, in screenwriting. I know a writer who's recently won a prestigious award who was complaining of being spoken to in incredibly contemptuous tones by a production company or something they were working on. And she was really upset to be spoken to so insultingly and condescendingly. As a result, writers gradually turned their attention from film to TV series, where compensations are met more fairly, or even new media streams such as Netflix. What is good news for audience and for American broadcasters may not be quite so cheery for writers and producers back home in the UK. The obvious answer is that the UK industry simply does not have the resource or the money to support such endeavor. But it is also a failure of ambition and imagination. Very rarely will a broadcaster in the UK commission as much as 10 hours, and certainly not the 50 hours envisaged by Netflix. From the above session, we can see that writers are not in an advantage stage at the moment. However, according to Mr. Robin Mahaji, things are indeed looking up. Fairer contracts and more unbiased systems are being set up every year. And writers facing trouble can always turn to the Writers Guild for help. Creative writing is one of the most basic foundation in the creative industry in many ways. The result will be catastrophic if writers are forced into escapism under unfair treatments. Therefore, uh, to avoid total collapse and destruction of the creative industry, most systematic and fairer contract laws are crucial. Thank you.